people have asked, if you accept his manners and his religion, you have to say yes. This is Islam, you have to say yes. Not how much money, when are you going to be able to provide what kind of house, what kind of accommodation, all this nonsense. And where do we get this cultural sense from? And we leave Islam. And we leave our fitra. We leave nature. And then, our Islam allows a man to marry multiple wives. And subhanAllah, I grew up in a culture that if you hear a man will marry twice, he's a bad man. I grew up this way. That's the culture. Culture, we told people, it's a bad person who marries one, have two or three wives. When Islam allows it, it's halal. But we grew up culturally teaching people it's haram. Whether it's men or women, teaching people it's wrong and it's bad through so culture. And I remember watching the documentary on TV when King Henry VIII married and he wanted to have an heir to his throne and his wife would not give him a son. So he kills the first wife. And then he marries again. And she can not have a son, so he kills her again. And then he asks his advisor, am I going to keep killing them if they can't give me sons? Well, what should I do? So his advisor told him, the Muslim have a great sin that allow them to marry multiple wives. Keep her and marry somebody else. SubhanAllah. But he chose that he goes to the murder to satisfy that he wants an heir. Rather than following the Islam, which is nature, for whatever reason, Islam allows it. So many things. So here we find in this we need in, uh, in chat groups about Muslim countries and how many women are not married, huh? that they passed, time has passed them by. And yet we say it's wrong to have multiple wives. It's okay that they miss the train, but it's wrong to have multiple wives. So doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that he created and he is a Latif al Khabir? So here Allah knows. I would not say everybody should marry multiple wives, but in the case where the king, the king Henry wanted a child and his wife could not give him, that was his way out rather than killing them. His way out is to kill her and marry her, find a reason why. So here Islam gives a nice, beautiful way out. And then Islam encourages to have children. And Rasulullah says, have a lot of children, I will be proud of you when my people in the day of judgment. And then what do we do? We say we cannot afford it. We think we can, I can afford it. Which is against the principle of Islam, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ مَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ We will provide to them and to you. Very simple. And yet our nature, so Islam says I will provide, and yet we choose the opposite. We choose to wait. We want to plan for ourselves, rather than accept that the risk is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He will provide for His children. And yet a lot of people say, oh, well, I could afford these two kids. As if it's he is the one who is providing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing. So, <coughs> we also need to see the miras and how Islam divided the, divided the inheritance. Divided the inheritance for the children and the parents and the relatives. Put everything, this is what a fitrah somebody by nature will do. So Islam didn't say give one child and deprive the rest. That we see some, I love this child more than others. So we see in this society somebody giving all his money to this one child and leaving everybody else. Islam realized by nature and fitrah everybody should get. And now counting how much the parents should get, how much the children should get, the relatives, the aunts, the cousins, everything, Islam accounts for it. And then at Tawak, divorce. Islam allows the divorce. But it's, if, uh, as it tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Arada Fisaba Al-Turadim Al-Bumah, Tashawur Falaj Naha Alayhima. If they want to separate, after they discuss among themselves and agree that the best thing for themselves is to separate, Falaj Naha Alayhima. There's nothing wrong with it. Looks at the human nature. Two people married in good intention, but unfortunately they could let, not live together or uh, understand each other. So after they discuss, and Islam says, bring somebody from her family and somebody from their family to try to resolve it. And after all this, if it could not resolve, فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهُمْ Divorce. But that's what do we see in other religions? They won't allow it. So either somebody has to marry again in a haram, or do something because it's not allowed. So Islam is a fitrah. And then food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ كُلُّهُمَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا 
ask him, what do you think it was good halal and tayyib? What's nice? And yes, most humans, if you show a child something killed, would he accept to eat from it? Because it's fitrah. The fitrah would say, no, this is dead, this is rotten. So halal and tayyib al Islam says to all mankind, eat the halal and eat the tayyib, eat the good things. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one thing by nature when he created us, as Sheikh Sha'aran says, he put something inside us that could not be satisfied except with Iman. We need this belief. We need the belief in Allah to satisfy. You see some people having so much money and then you read in the paper they committed suicide. Why they're missing this one thing inside an Iman? And that's why some people go for drugs and some people go on alcohol. They're trying to satisfy this urge in them that can always be satisfied with an Iman. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us the example on a sinking ship when the ship is drowning and everyone goes back to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. And here as I mentioned I was watching a documentary and the man said he was on a sinking ship and he said he will never find an atheist on a sinking ship. Everybody, whoever believes, raise their hand, Ya Allah save us, God save us. All those atheists who said they created themselves and they're out of nature, he said you cannot find an atheist on a sinking ship or on a sinking plane or anything else because at that moment we all know there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we raise our hands. And if you study mankind throughout time, you know, those who don't know Allah, they need a God. They have to. They, everybody, humans inside them know there has to be a God and they need a God or to say there is a God out there because it is nature. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with. And then in al-jihad, what does Islam say about al-jihad? It says if a Muslim goes out to do jihad, if he fights and wins, he takes out of the roots of the war. And if he dies, he goes to al-jannah. It's a win-win. But what have we done today? A soldier gets so little salary, if you win, you get nothing, and if you die, you go to al-jannah. We've taken away that part, if you win an al-jannah, you get. So here we've taken the fitrah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in deep inside us, we want. So if he wins in al-jannah, what does he get? Nothing. He gets his no salary. But in Islam, he gets something. He gets a lot. So here, al-fitrah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we as humans want and satisfy those in a dunya, in a lakhra. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, all the children of Adam who make mistakes and the best of those who make mistakes and those who ask for forgiveness. So let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his forgiveness insha'Allah.
en Antonia.